welcome to the Smirik Art Studio. Today's project is going to be a 8x10 canvas. We're going to add some texture onto the canvas with some tissue paper and then add a metal embossed feather to the, the um, canvas. Let's get started. For the first part of the project, we are going to need our canvas. Again, this is an 8x10 canvas. We are going to need some gesso just to add a layer of gesso onto the canvas. And with that, we're going to need a paintbrush. And once the gesso is dry, we are going to use some tissue paper to add the texture. And we're going to use mad gel to add the texture paper to the canvas. You can also use um, a different uh, gel. It just, I prefer working with a mad gel. And then once that is dry, we are going to paint our tissue paper. Although it is white, I just want to make it a really nice white. And I'm going to use the titanium heavy body white acrylic paint. You can use any other acrylic paint. For the second part of our project, um, which is the metal embossing, we are going to need our design and I've just roughly sketched out a feather with more or less what I would like to do on it. So this is, it's into the Zentangle um, metal tangle kind of things. So we're going to need our design, we're going to need our pewter as well as painter's tape just to adhere it so that you don't move while we trace it. And then for tracing, we are either going to use a pencil or a pen, or you can use your stylus for that as well. When it comes to the embossing, I'm not sure if I'm going to do high relief on some pieces. As I'm working, I will see how that unfolds. But the essential tools that we always need is our Teflon tip tools, a variety of them, as well as a stylus and um, our paper stumps. And then I've pulled out a texture wheel because I think I'm going to use quite a bit of bobbles in there and I can use this from the back. And I also have some ball and cup tools that I can use if I want to make some bigger balls in there. And then of course our surfaces, a hard surface, a paper pad and a semi-soft or a soft surface. And as for the patina, I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to do the chemical patina or whether I'm going to do a faux patina. Once I've worked with the feather, I will get a feel for it and make that decision. So shall we get started? First up is just adding a layer of gesso to the canvas. And sometimes I do literally just work up and down, but because this is one that is going to have some texture on, I'm just going to go um, at random. Oh, and I see my gesso half. I better have a look at this because there's some pieces in. And you can omit this step as well if you don't want to add the gesso personally. Again, you know, I just like working with the gesso. It just gives everything a little bit of a grip. And half of my brush is gonna be on this, um, on this canvas as well. Oh, come on. Oh, uh, you can use that for texture too. It sometimes help if you don't buy these cheap brushes, but that was all that I could find when I was looking for some brushes. So I guess that's it. And once this is completely covered, you can either dry it with a heating tool or your hair dryer. Then we can move on to the next step. Okay, so it's dry, so the next step is the tissue paper. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to open it and I'm literally just going to give it a light little bit of a crumble just to add some extra texture. And, you know, it all depends how much te texture you want on, on how many pieces of... Um, tissue paper you're going to use and we're going to start by painting on some of the matte gel or whichever mal, mal, gel you are working or using I should say 
and we're just going to start putting it down and you can add texture as you are moving along you can have some pieces that has less texture in than other sides one thing that you have to keep in mind is if you do this and you have an area um, like over here you need to make sure that you add some gel in between the two layers otherwise it is not going to adhere and you will keep on having it flipping up so you can really maneuver it with your hands around as well and yeah so you're just going to keep on going place it down and then add some of the gel medium on top and similar to what you go in between areas you also have to make sure that you have enough of the um, gel on your canvas so i'm just going to continue on on the same and i'm going to fill up the whole canvas mm -hmm. Once you've fiddled enough, you can just come in and you can tear off the sides of the tissue paper. So you're going to go all around. Sometimes it's actually better if you wash your hands before the time. Oh, and there is a piece. I'm just going to use this. that I tore it off so I'm just going to add that in and this is a nice part you can fix as you are going and, and then after this it is going to be your decision whether you want to really trim it nice and neat or whether you want to add a layer of the um, gel over these just to secure these on the sides so usually when I work with the stretch canvases I would definitely go work over the sides as well just to make sure that when you look at your project from the sides that you actually see the same as what you see on the front double check to make sure everything is secure if it's not you can always just poke a little hole in there and then come in with a paintbrush and just pop that air bubble and you will see whether it is thick or thick tissue paper or whether it is an air bubble. So at this point, I mean, you can choose as well. You can have less texture. You can have a lot of texture. You can mix it up. It doesn't really matter. It is again you know it is what is working for you so I've changed to a thinner paintbrush or one that's not as white and all I'm doing now is I'm just gonna go around and actually you know what I'm just gonna think I'm gonna use my finger for this um, I think that's gonna work better so I'm coming in and I sort of add a layer of the Magel to the canvas and then I just fold those pieces that we tore off I'm just folding that over and secure that to the side of the canvas so again I'm going to work my way all around the canvas
I'm going to come in and dry this again with my hair dryer and once that is done I'm going to add another thin layer of the Magel over it just to make sure that everything has been adhered properly. I'm just going to start with a new one because I think this one is pretty done and I find that it's really thick. So yeah, dry and then paint another layer. After the gel is dry, I'm just going to use the titanium white and I'm going to paint the whole canvas white. And as soon as that is done, we're just going to put it off to the side to dry naturally. Um, I might come and speed dry it towards the end if it's not dry enough, but for now, I'm just going to paint it. Mm -hmm. design is traced and I've just moved on to a off piece of or an off cut piece of pewter that I had rather than using a brand new piece for this so um, I'm going to do the feather similar to what I did this one it's exactly the same design this one is just smaller and um, so yeah this is a design that I actually use quite often so I'm going to do the same I'm going to do engraving or etching which means I'm going to use I'll see when once I start working either my Teflon tip tool or my stylus and I'm just going to reline the whole design and then once that is done I will turn it around, I will pop some of the areas out and fill it with wax and then I will make my decision whether I'm going to do the faux patina as with this one or whether I'm going to do the um, real patina. Okay, but first steps, we're just going to reline everything here. The first thing I want to do is I'm just going to emboss the shaft of this feather but I don't want it to be raised too much so I'm just going to use a Teflon tip tool a wider one and I'm going to do it on my paper pad rather than a soft pad so I'm going to start coming in and I'm just going to go over the line and try and do it as <laughs> straight as what I can. Now there's too many lines. I don't know which one. Well, let's go with this one, yeah. And I'm slowly trying to retrace this. Usually it ends up in a disaster, but so far so good. Going slightly wider towards the end. and turn it around come back onto my hard surface using my paper stump i'm going to flatten around it on both sides and refine with my teflon tip i'm using a wider end and I'm just going to refine on both sides of the line. I'm just sitting here concentrating and thinking, you know, we are never satisfied. In the winter, I'm complaining that it's too dark. In the summer, now <laughs> the sun is shining in and the reflection is such I can't really see. Okay, so let's give it another try. I'm actually going to use 
Oops, and there I went in. So what I'm trying to do here is just to get it more or less even. It is easier to do it when you have a little bit higher um, embossed line than what the one is that is that you created when you are on the paper pad. Okay. And now I think I'm just going to pour in this tile here. And I'm just going to reline this on the inside and I'm on a hard surface now. Just to give a nice smooth line. There you go. Um, the shaft is a little bit wider at the bottom, but that is natural. Okay, next step is going to be, we're going to start with our engraving. I don't normally use a um, cutting mat for a hard surface, but there is occasions where I do work with this and I think today is going to be one of those. Just one note, when you do work with a cutting mat, it needs to be one that has never seen a, an exacto knife or a craft knife. I would cut on this side, but this side I just keep smooth. And now all I'm going to do is we're just going to start and we are re going to retrace all the lines. I'm using a little bit more pressure than what I did when I was tracing the design. And just so that I can have an engraving or an etched. Okay. So I'm going to go around and I'm going to do all sort of the outlining of the feathers. Mm -hmm. As you are working you can keep on flattening your pewter and also when you get to points like these make sure that it looks as if it is flowing into each other don't have a um, disconnect between them done anything here because I'm going to cut out the feather um, I will decide if I'm going to turn this into just smaller little feathers or if I'm going to emboss them but I don't want to have finicky lines going there and the next step is going to be to start filling in the inside so also when you look at this when you look at the design and compared to this one there so when i did the tracing of the design i only did one of the lines however there you can see there's more plus the little um, bubbles or dots that's in there so when you trace don't feel um, the urge to trace everything because sometimes you can go off the lines which I did there but just follow your own guidelines so what I would do here now is I'm going to trace what I have and then I'm going to look at my design and I see okay there is another small one in there as for the little dot that is there I'm going to come back later and I'm going to decide whether I want to use um, one of the cup and ball or ball and cup tools or whether I'm just going to make a dot like that. And again, as you're working, 
just keep on flattening your pewter. So next step for me is I'm going to quickly fill in everything that has been marked. given it some thought and I was thinking I'm just going to come in here with a couple well actually only two and I'm gonna go like smaller ones so that it still have that same idea So for these ones, I don't think I'm going to need, want a lot of details. I'll just go and I'll stick with similar to what the design is there. So I'm going to use, and now I'm going to bring back my paper pad. And this one, I'm going to use the, the big dotted wheel. And... I'm going to add some dots to that and I just grab a hard surface so that I can flatten around. I don't want to flatten too much just because I am going to pop everything in the end so I should have had a little bit more movement there. I'm back onto the paper pad. Yeah, that one has a little bit more movement. I'm also going to grab my, oh, that's a nice one, the micro one. And I'm just going to add a little bit of detail into these small little ones. And I'm working on the back of the pewter on my paper pad. And, oh, there's only one there. And then for these ones here, yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to add any texture in there. Now it is decision time. Let's just have a look here. Okay, so this one needs to get some more there. And you know, you don't really need to go and see, okay, this is what the design is. You can change it as you are going. You can decide, oh no, I rather would like to have this on this area and... Um, I mean, you can go in with lines. So instead of doing the dots over there um, or there, you can come in with lines. And when I do lines, I prefer switching over to my stylus just because it is finer than what the Teflon tip tool is. And do that. And then I think I'm going to... I will repeat the lines on this side. A design is, works always well when you have a repetition. So this, the feathers, but there's so many other designs as well, is a really good idea for when you look into Zentangle and those kind of um, designs. I think for this one over here, um, no, that one I will use the ball and cup tool. Um, that one has some movement. So let's just, oh, which one is that now again? Mm, see, now I can't even read my own design. Okay, so this one I'm going to do, oh, where's the small one? Let me just grab this small Now that I have it. So let me see. So that one we've got the movement and oh, this one over here. So this is a small dotted wheel and we added some small dots there. So, you know, just, just think about how your design is going and um, 
there is some in there so i think we're going to use this one there too and no, that one we're going to i'm going to do actual use the for those ones i think i'm going to use the wheel and that's the big dotted wheel that i'm using here And if you go out the line, it's not a train smash because we are going to um, cut it out. And there's nothing on the design, but I think I'm going to add a couple of lines in here. Just to give more grip or to add something extra for grip on the, um, for the patina. Let me see what I can do else. Okay, that I'm going to use... The, um, and there I'll add this there's nothing so I'm just going to bring in some lines there and the same with this one I actually should have gone that way because that would have had more movement like the feathers this one I need some movement here it's very rigid this first line that I did just look at your design and you know see how you can add some extra details in there okay on this um okay i think i'm going to use the small one that's a small oh and that's the wrong one oh well now there's another texture on there that shows you never leave wheels around that you don't use but you can just go back in with the right one and there you go it's all fixed up it almost looks like a paisley okay so i think next one is we're going to do the cup and ball tool there and the cup and ball tool there I'm working on the back of my pewter and that's too big and I'm just going to come in and I'm going to swivel, swivel, swivel and where is the other ones that I said I would like to, oh that's over there, I think I can actually come in with this one, yeah, yeah, I'm going to start with the bigger one, I'm going to swivel, swivel, swivel so i'm doing three of the bigger ones and then a smaller one and two smaller ones on the inside so that is all when you work with your um, cup and ball tools in a line don't always think you have to do the whole line exactly the same you can change it out it's your design So there we have that now with that being said i actually think we need something here too and i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to in that little circle there i'm going to add some of the smaller balls and we're just going to cup them 90 degrees so now we have race 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 we have all that and um um i need something there but yeah just look at your design and see you know where you can still add a little bit of details so that can go over there and can add some lines there as well so that connects up with those ones there and this is not really too busy and I think I'm just going to add 
those lines there and is there another place that I can add, add them no I don't think so okay and I think our design is oh no there what can I do there I'm going to do diagonal lines like that I sort of like that crisscross idea that I have there so I have that repetition too and um, just adding some dots on this side now bringing them down in here and they are just at random I didn't space them or measure them in nothing and I think I'm going to do it on this side too So I'm typically taking you through how I would work when I'm doing a design. Um, yeah, and I think that's it for now. Absolutely. On to the next step, and I'm working on a soft surface now, and I'm going to work from the back. Actually, to your yeah, back, you can't really see. But this is the back of my pewter. And I'm just going to start popping out the sort of the feathers here just to raise them slightly and I'm first using my finger and then I will come in and I will use the um, paper stump after. Okay. Turn over to the paper stamp and all I'm doing is I am just slowly raising this and I don't do it one go, I'm working slowly in sections. And I'm trying to work in long movements, usually when you work you would actually do little circular movements but one of the reasons I'm doing the longer movements or is for when you mimic the feathers so hard to have that line sort of of this is how the feathers is going come back in onto the hard surface smooth around and that one has just popped back in so slowly pushing it out again come back in and flatten around mm -hmm. the one side done and um, and one of the the opposite side so I'm quickly going to do back in and I'm going to do exactly the same with these ones and then as well refine as you are going along as I was refining this little leaf um, over here I just realized I didn't have any definition between those two so when I did the high relief there I should have first popped the one and then the other one but now it it looks okay because now it is still part of that design and that's what I always say you know you know where the issues is coming in or that it's not part of your design the next person don't they they, unless they've seen the design so I'm just trying to slightly make some definition in there with being very careful that I do not um, let that one go flat but it would have been best had I just done it before the time okay 
So next I'm going to fold this with wax and once it's folded with wax I'm going to think about what I'm going to use for patina. I'll fold the feather with beeswax and as next step is going to be to add the sequong tape and I've made the decision that I'm going to do faux patina on this one. Faux patina it is and as always we're just going to color it in and once it's been colored in we're going to wipe it all in the same direction. I'm just going to grab a couple more pens here. There is also a video where I go into detail on to exactly how to do faux patina. So I'll see you when the patina is, faux patina is done. And now we are going to start cutting out. You can use your um, dry needle point cutter to cut out this, but because it's a fairly simple design, I think I'm just going to come in and use my small um, little scissors to cut out and when it comes to these areas over here I'm not going to go right into the end I'm just going to go slightly in so you still have oops, a definition there so that you can see the different sort of parts of the feather because when you look at the feather sometimes you do have where they actually um, split a little bit i have to say when it comes to working with the zentangles i do sort of prefer the um doing the faux patina although it looks really good with the real patina as well but i'll I just find that you have a little bit more control when you are using the faux patina when it comes to designs like this. So I'm going to go all around and even with this one, although it's right up until that edge, I'm still not going to go there. I will make sort of a U-turn over here and come back in. I'm just quickly going to cut out the rest here. everything has been cut out you can just lay your feather down and you can see because especially on the white you will be able to see if there is really sharp edges or points and then you can just come back in and you can trim it I would rather have a rounded edge than what eventually in the event I don't think it will happen but you know you never know um, that a point comes sort of loose and it's so sharp and it hurts somebody yeah that's how I'm going to do mine so I'm just going to place it and then of course I'm going to forget how I wanted to place it afterwards but it's peeling our sequin tape you can also use glue glue for this you don't necessarily have to use the sequin tape and you can also erase this from the canvas it doesn't necessarily have to go straight onto the canvas now I kind of like it like this so let's see more or less so I have a lot of blank space or negative space I should say um, yeah, that's it. And now it is just really putting it down. And I'm going to seal everything in the end with a um, gloss.
clear lacquer spray once everything is done so i haven't sealed my canvas yet and as always i'm just going to go in and i'm going to make sure everything is down and secure especially those little points and our sort of busy minimalist um, project is done we started with a blank canvas we added some texture with our um, tissue paper painted everything white then we did the embossing or the engraving on um, pewter the feather with the entangles and after we did the faux patina we just cut everything out and um, we added it to the canvas so that is you know sometimes when you don't always have to have a lot of things going on it can be a simple design like this and it has so much impact on the right background as always thank you so much for spending time with me in the studio today and always remember the world of reality has its limits the world of imagination is boundless